Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I got this beautiful game that I want to share with y'all. Um, it's with me playing against the international master. Uh, I want to say international master. Uh, I, I want to say uh, Arn Lubber. I don't know what that name is. I, I don't really know. But, of course, guys, I hit him with the l shot system, and I beat him in 17 moves. How did this happen? Let's go check out this game. All right, guys. So, obviously, I played as white, uh, I, and my opponent played as black. Uh, I played C3. He played C6. And, obviously, of course, guys, the engine wants me to play E4, but I don't go for that. I play Queen A4. And, of course, guys, the engine's going to always say that there's an inaccuracy with playing these moves. But, again, they don't understand what the whole concept of the L shot is. So, this is why we play it. Uh, D5 is played. I play D3. Uh, Knight F6. Uh, H3. Um, G6. And, of course, I go G4. I get another uh, mistake uh, notification due to the fact that the engine thinks Bishop F4 is the best move. But, of course... That's not what I'm trying to play, all right? So uh, after G4, Bishop G7, and then Bishop G2, and then, of course, Black Castle Kingside. And, of course, guys, if y'all already know how I play the l shot system, y'all already know that I like to play the Knight B to D2, and then maybe G5, H4, H5, and then move the Queen over to the king side. And for somebody that don't know how to play against the l shot system, you would get uh, you would get your opponent every time uh, with this type of style, you know, especially with this type of attack. So um, I go knight b to d2, he goes uh, knight b to d7, and then I immediately go g5 automatically, all right? I just want to attack right away. And again, guys, I, I do want to get this h4 and h5 coming in. Uh, as soon as he went knight e8, guys, I was automatically happy because then I hit him with h4. Uh, obviously, the engine uh, wanted uh, the opponent to go e5, in which he doesn't. He goes to knight d6. Um, I'm not sure why of the knight d6. Maybe he wants to go knight f5. But to me, uh, I don't think this really does. This really doesn't do anything at all. I think it's a waste of time. I think maybe uh, his best bet or maybe one possible move that I thought would be logical was knight c7 and knight e6 maybe. Uh, maybe to hit c5 and then b5. I uh, maybe. I mean, it's, it's going to take a lot of moves to do that, but uh, I'm not really sure uh, what was his whole point of doing that. So I'm not really sure. But he goes knight d6. So uh, I go h5 right away, guys. I go h5. Uh, he finally goes e5, but then by that time, guys, I think it's too late. Uh, I think uh, by him going e5, he does want to hit uh, the g5 pawn you know, to maybe help him out a little bit, but it doesn't happen because I go queen h4 right away. Um, now I'm re getting ready to go h captures g6. Um, but of course, instead of going rook e8, because rook e8 was the best move, uh, he actually goes f5, and f5 was not the best move. Um, yeah, and I think this actually hurt him um, a lot um, in his position because after h captures g6, you know, uh, he takes, and then I hit him with uh, queen h7 check. Now, in his position, I'm pretty sure he wasn't too worried about his position because he's probably thinking that um, he's threatening rook h8, you know, where he could trap my queen or whatever, or he may think that I may have to go back to queen h3 or queen h2 some way. But, of course, it doesn't happen that way because I hit him with the move rook a6, and this is um, the l shot system style of play. This is one of the attacking techniques from the l shot. So again, guys, y'all look at a lot of my games, you will see that I do stuff like this. But however, y'all have not seen me do this when my knight is still on knight d2. Because normally, uh, when I do stuff like this, you know, the queen is not going to be able to attack the pawn because obviously this knight wouldn't be in front of this dark square bishop. But in this case, my knight is in front of the dark square bishop. And this makes this game even more entertaining and more interesting and more powerful because it almost come off as a surprise attack. Uh, it looks like I'm just giving up the pawn for free, like it ain't nothing, due to the fact that, I mean, this is a, a bait. This does look very tempting due to the fact that after queen captures g5, he is hitting uh, the rook on h6. 
also getting ready to trap the queen at the same time. And also, um, he's getting ready to hit my light square bishop as well. So it looks like a triple threat. Um, uh, when black look at this position, it looks like a triple threat that black has on me. And like white is just in a lost position. However, it doesn't go down like that. After queen captures g5, I immediately hit on with knight e4, and it just looks very nasty. So now it's not like the queen could just take this rook because my dark square bishop is guarding that square, you know. And then at the same time, guys, not only am I hitting uh, his uh, queen, but I'm also hitting his undefended knight on uh, d6. Uh, and also, it's not like the knight or the pawn could take this uh, knight either because the fact that I'm still hitting his uh, queen on g5. So what do my opponent do in this position? Well, in this position, my opponent... Uh, takes my light square bishop. Um, he is still um, threatening my knight on g1, but I hit him with the move. Knight captures d6. And I hit him with check. Now, unfortunately, my opponent does go king e7, which was um, a blunder or, or a mistake. Uh, it wasn't the best move. The best move was actually king f6. Uh, I'm going to tell you why, because the thing is, um, with king f6, he is defending the g6 pawn. Uh, however, if he went king f6, my threat would have been knight f3, where I am threatening bishop g5 check. And, um, uh, not that it would be checkmate, but, um, uh, it, it definitely will almost be checkmate, uh, but he'll be in a worse situation. So, in other words, like, if he did moves like d4, uh, after bishop g5 check, uh, after, uh, king e6, um, uh, rook catcher g6 does come into play. And uh, literally, it doesn't matter what he does. If he tries to, I don't know, maybe um, maybe bishop f6, if he did something like this, um, this queen is automatically trapped. Uh, so, yeah, this black queen is, is pretty much lost. It's going to get captured, right? But that's, that, that's another line, if, you know, if black decides to do something like that. But um, let's say king f6. Uh, knight f3, uh, but of course the best move in this position after knight f3, it would have to be f4 because you want to prevent, black wants to prevent white from going bishop g5, which is uh, what black wants to do. Uh, of course, white will still capture the pawn on uh, f4, and then if he takes, then we have rook h2. Uh, if he decides to go queen g4, um, white will still go rook h4, and then if he decides to go back, obviously we don't want to draw at all. We just want to go king d2 because the threat now is uh, rook g1, uh, which is uh, what we want. Um, I was also thinking about this uh, in a way too, like what would happen if you know if the rook comes here? Uh, it wouldn't be really nothing happening because um, we have rook captures um, f4 check. Uh, yeah, so he can't come here, but he can't go uh, king e6. Uh, if that does happen, uh, we just pretty much take the bishop off, and we're actually hitting the rook on uh, h8 as well. So, um, yeah, so either way, uh, white would still be, I feel like white would still be in a better position because we have more pawns. Uh, I think we'll have a better end game, and I think our position is very, very solid um, in this position. But anyway, just to go back, guys, um, uh, my opponent resigned on the 17th move due to the fact that after uh, king e7, I hit him with rook capture g6, and notice that uh, the black queen is um, trapped, and there's nowhere that he can go. Not only is he trapped, but I'm also threatening the dark square um, bishop as well. As you can see in this position, uh, black is totally lost in this position. Uh, this is what happened when your opponent takes the poison pawn, you know, or eating the wrong fruit of the tree. You know, you get in a position like this, and it's not good, you know. So, uh, again, 17 moves, guys. This was only 17 moves. So, uh, definitely uh, take this uh, game, guys. You know, try to uh, make it your own and everything. And you can definitely use this on somebody that's even stronger than you who don't really know anything about the L shot. So, um, again, guys, thank you for uh, watching this video. If you like this video, make sure you like, share, comment. Let me know what you think. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.